Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Science Online. My name is Chris and today is the last Wednesday of April. So stay tuned for Maine's top, uh, Maine, yeah, May's topic. Uh, best part is I have an update. Look at my little eggplants. How great is this? These are my chives. They're actually outgrowing stuff. Uh, I believe this is my basil, my, I think this might be cilantro, but look at them. They're growing so big. Now you'll notice, see if I can pick this one up without breaking it. You'll notice that there are a lot of little cuttings here. Well, all of those little cuttings, those are because you remember how sometimes the, there were too many seeds and I actually, I put like two or three in as opposed to one. Well, when those two or three come up, I basically just carefully clipped the ones that I didn't want. So that way this one can grow big and strong and it's not in competition with all of its little plant friends. I know that sounds a little barbaric, but the herd needed to be thinned. Now at this point, they're actually getting too big for my egg carton. So I have to actually replant them soon. Uh, these are the only size pots I have. So I need to go and buy some smaller ones because these are for my sunflowers. Uh, so update. I hope your eggs are doing just as well. I don't know where to put them. Put them down here carefully. Uh, I hope your egg planters are growing just as well and are 100% ready to uh, soon either be replanted or go into an inside pot. Uh, I know where I am. Uh, definitely don't want to put them out yet because it is still too, too cold for tiny little plants. But now we are going to discuss today's topic of compost. Now, a lot of people think, well, what is, what is compost? And compost is basically just broken down, degraded, uh, um, organic material. So it's, all of your raked leaves, that's considered brown material, raked leaves, cardboard, your green material, all those lawn shavings with the chlorophyll. Uh, and then you can also put in anything that's organic, like food scraps. Now, when I say food scraps, I'm not saying if it's a food scrap, put it in your compost pile. Because there are a lot of things that well, you shouldn't compost because not only is it bad for the plant's health, but it could potentially bring critters that you don't want into your yard, but it could also give you parasites and no one wants to make the phone call about that to your doctor. Yeah, no parasites. So things that you can compost, for instance, uh, strawberries, cucumbers, uh, potato peelings, carrot peelings, pieces of celery, those little weird itty bitty, like leftover, like, romaine lettuce bums, you can also regrow those by putting them in a little water and you can compost them. Things you can't compost. Now there is a list, uh, any sort of animal matter. So that means uh, cooked steaks, hamburgers, bloods, bones. Uh, there are some compost stations that will actually collect that because the compost itself there gets so warm that it actually kills any of the ickies. But if you're just using it in the backyard, just don't, just throw that stuff away. Uh, also any animal leavings or excrement for those little sore looking, um, dogs and cats can have worms. And if you put those into your compost, then that compost can be put into your vegetables, which could then give you worms. So don't, don't use animal. The only exception would be if you happen to have cows and then like you already have built in compost. And the reason we can use cows as opposed to other animals is because cows have sections of their stomach that actually breaks down and kills parasites for the most part. Um, so those are examples. So anything that was living or once living that will eventually degrade and break down. Now I'm making a compost pile in the backyard and today I was going to show you but it's raining, which is why we're in the basement talking about compost instead of outside actually doing compost. Uh, right now, all I have is a couple pieces of cardboard laid down flat. Nice. I have a lot of extra leaves and hopefully and at the rate that spring is going a couple months when I mow my lawn, I'm going to put lawn in there and any of the fruit, veggie, organic kitchen scraps um, we'll put in there and out back too. Uh, and the difference to why compost is so important, and I'm going to show you because it's very obvious if you look right here. So 
Which one is the compost? Any idea? Now this is just simple starting pot soil. It's very dry. Remember when we, we uh, planted stuff in our eggs, I had to add water to this. The reason it's so dry is because when companies ship it, they dehydrate or take out all of the water. So that way it's cheaper to ship because without all that water weight, well, it's lighter and lighter things are less expensive to ship. So you always want to add water when you get potting soil. Now look at the difference. This is very light and airy and you see all that white stuff that's a, I believe it's called perlite and that's just so you can have aeration and drainage so that the dirt doesn't compact and like grab the roots and squeeze on them because we want healthy roots. But if you look at the compost, there's all of this organic material. So I think that was like wood shavings. Um, like, look at it. It's all broken down. And do you see the difference in color? That's the big thing. Whenever you're doing compost, compost is deep and dark and rich. And like, mm, you can even smell it. There's a, eh, eh. This, this smells like potting soil. It's like, mm, dirt. And there is a difference between dirt and soil. We're not going to get into that today. But this, this smells like wet earth and things decaying and things growing. So once you have all of your materials in your safe little container, and remember, you are putting in kitchen scraps, so there's going to be food. So you're going to want to somehow cage it in and put a top on it so that way you don't get critters in your backyard. Because as much as it's fun to watch squirrels and possums and raccoons, it's all fun and games if you get a black bear who then decides that not only does he like your compost bin, he also likes your bird feeders, which are on your porch. And nobody wants a black bear that thinks it's okay to come on your porch. Also, as cute as raccoons are, they can be destructive. Same with groundhogs. However, if you have a possum, build it a little home and love it forever. Because possums are amazing and eat ticks, which is why we like to have them around. So once you have contained that compost pile, when you are putting in all of your stuff, you want to make sure it's in a shady spot because bright, hot sun will actually kill all those beneficial bacterium that, that help break down all of your organic material. Okay, so all of this stuff is being broken down by fungus and bacteria and like mushrooms and mold. That's what they do. They break down organic material so that way we can get this nice, rich, nutrient-dense soil, okay? You want to keep it out of the sun in a cool spot, and you also want to keep it wet. So it's usually a good idea to keep it next to someplace that has water access. So, for instance, I really wanted to put it down the hill in this nice, cool, shady section where we put all of our lawn shavings, but I don't have any access to water, so we're going to put it in the backyard instead because I have a hose right there. So, shady spot access to water and remember what you can and cannot put in because those are very very important we want everybody to be safe we want everybody to be uh healthy and like look at the difference look at this this is what we want in good compost rich and dense in nutrients all the stuff that we want our plants to eat and to use to be healthy and strong and give us vegetables all right, if you have any questions, ask in the comments. As always, think scientifically, ask questions, uh, and I'll see you all next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.